Okay, so like I said, my name is Dr. McCary. This is College Algebra, <coughs> the first day. The textbook, <coughs> this is the textbook that I see all of you have. It's not really necessary to, to bring your te textbook to class. I won't ever have you flipping to, to a particular page, so it's not, you don't need to carry it. You, of course you can if you wish to do so, but <coughs> you won't need to have it. Okay, so then we're going to follow the textbook pretty closely, and we're going to start out in section 1.1. So section 1.1, and that is called the real numbers. Okay, so just a matter of <laughs> note, this little s with a circle in it, that's pronounced section. <laughs> and I didn't figure that out until I was like a graduate student, right? Because where do you look that up in the dictionary? Do you look it up under the S's? Maybe you look it up under circle. Or is it punctuation? I don't know. But at any rate, it's pronounced section. <coughs> Great. Okay, so then <coughs> there, are se there are several sets of numbers, and you need to know what, they, uh, what they're called. So the first thing I'm going to write here is REM, which means I'm going to make a remark. Okay, and this remark is going to be titled The Natural Numbers. Who can tell me what the natural numbers are? <coughs> Sorry? Zero, one? No, that, well, it depends on who you're talking to. Okay, so then, <coughs> so then the natural numbers is this list of numbers. One, two, three, four, five, etc. This whole list, the list of all of the, of the positive integers. <coughs> Okay, so someone tell me a number which uh, is not a natural number. Zero, negative one. Okay, good. Zero is not a natural number, okay, according to this book. If you talk to a computer scientist or you talk to other mathematicians, then maybe zero is. But <coughs> natural numbers are all, no negative number is, is a natural number. Okay, so then now. The way this is uh, written, typically, is not like this. And we want to have a slightly more precise and more formal notation. So really, what, how we're going to write it is like this. Oh, what happened here? OK. OK, so this is a brace, a left brace, a curly parentheses. OK, so then 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and then a right brace. OK, so this. <coughs> denotes a set. So how many how many uh, how many numbers are in this set? <laughs> a lot. Okay, so I like that answer, but there's a there's a more precise word that starts with I that I'm looking for. Infinity, right? There's infinitely many uh, numbers in here. So how can you how can we be sure that there's infinitely many numbers? Yeah. Okay, but here okay here's something. Okay, what if, what if I say, okay, I'm going to mark a spot on the floor here, and I'm going to mark a spot one meter away on the floor there. Okay, so two spots marked one meter apart. And I'm going to do the following infinite procedure. Okay, the first step, I'm going to step half of the distance to the next spot. And the next step, I'm going to step half of the distance to the spot. And half the distance to the spot half, half, half. So after infinitely many steps, how far have I gone? One meter, right? <laughs> One meter. OK, so then <coughs> that's kind of weird, isn't it? Right? After infinitely many steps, all I made it made was one meter. OK, so then no. So the reason why <coughs> the reason why there's <laughs> you're going to hear that if you The reason why there's infinitely many numbers is imagine this. What if there was finitely many of them? Imagine that situation. What if there was finitely many natural numbers? Then there has to be a biggest one. You know, just for the sake of argument, maybe you, maybe you think, ah, they just the, the natural numbers, they end in a million. They, there's, just, there's no more than that. OK, so then a million is the biggest one. What about one million plus one? Shouldn't that be a natural number, too? Yeah, that should be a natural number too. Also, 
right? Not the number two. <coughs> so that works for any argument, right? You say, well, I think this one right here, this one is the biggest natural number. Well, that, that thing plus one should also be a natural number. So there can't be a biggest natural number. So there's infinitely many of them, okay? So then now, the way that the, this set is denoted is as follows. Okay, it's denoted as an n, n, but it's written kind of funny. Okay, so then here's an n, and then appended to this n is a little box over here on the left. So it's an n, and then this, this left leg has a box. So this little stylistic thing, this is a mathematician font called Blackboard Bold. So what it is is trying to write a bold letter, but all I have is my pen here. <coughs> okay, great. So don't worry, it'll pick up. We're just trying to get used to the way we're conversing <coughs> for now. Okay, so there's another set of numbers that you need to know, the whole numbers. So then, what are what are whole numbers? Ah, right. They're the just the same as the natural numbers, except now we don't start at one; we start at zero. Okay. So <coughs> the natural numbers of this set: zero, one, two, three, four, etc. So a W, and then you make a little box so that it looks bold. Okay, so now <coughs> we need to get used to some of these words. So the natural numbers and the whole numbers, they are sets. They're sets of numbers. Someone describe to me the relationship between these two sets, the natural numbers and the whole numbers. I'm looking for a specific kind of relationship. Okay, so then all the natural numbers are positive. How about the whole numbers? All, are all of the whole numbers positive? Ex so, so no, right? So <coughs> that's not the one, the word I'm looking for. I'm looking for uh, a word that starts with S and ends with subset. Subset. <laughs> he got it. Okay, so. Okay, so now, subset. Someone describe to me the relationship between the natural numbers and the whole numbers using the word subset. <coughs> Was this something that you've never heard of before? Never heard of before? Okay, so then <coughs> let's look. Every natural number is a whole number. Right? So then if, if 5 is a natural number, then 5 is a whole number. Right? 5 is in here. If a million is a natural number, then a million is a whole number. So every natural number is a whole number. Is the reverse true? Is every whole number a natural number? Okay, so which whole number is not? Zero, right? Zero is a whole number, but it is not a natural number. Okay, so what that means is that <coughs> one way you can describe that relationship is that the natural numbers is a subset, is a subset of the whole numbers. So, note that n is a subset of w. Okay, so then that's the, the way you, the way you say it in English. But the way you write it in, in math <coughs> is like this, that n, okay, like this, is w. Okay, so this <coughs> is pronounced subset. Okay, and that kind of makes sense a little bit because, <coughs> right, what if this was, what if this was 3, right, the number 3, and what if this was the number 4? Then you could write what here? 
you could write that kind of looks like this symbol. You could write less than, right? Three less than four. So this is sort of like saying, ah, well, uh, this set n is in a sense less than the set w because n contains less elements uh, than w does. w contains all of the natural numbers and also zero, whereas n contains just <coughs> the natural numbers. Okay, so any question about this one? Okay, so then now I have a question for you. We have two sets written on the page, n and w. Now, all of the numbers in W, they're all belong to another category that starts with I. Th these, all of these numbers are what? Integers. They're all integers. Now, does W contain all integers? No, there has to be at least one integer. If, there, if, you, if you say no, then you have to give me at least one example of an integer which is not a, which is not a whole number. Negative 1. Negative 1, that's an integer. Is it in the set of whole numbers? No, evidently not. Okay, so we have a new set called the integers. <coughs> okay, so it is equal to this set. So it is 0 plus or minus 1 plus or minus 2, plus or minus 3, plus or minus 4, etc. <coughs> okay. So, interesting, right? The natural numbers, <coughs> well, the name for that set is N. And the whole numbers, the name for that set is W. So what do you suppose the name for the integers is? You would think so, but no, it's not. Who knows the name? <laughs> who knows the letter name for the set of, in of integers? Anyone? Now I always like to ask that question. It's Z. <coughs> okay, so then the reason why it's Z is because the German uh, word for number is Stalin, which starts with Z. And a significant amount of this mathematics was devised by uh, Swiss and, and, and German uh, citizens 200, 300 years ago. Okay, so Z for Zollin. Okay, <coughs> great, the integers. Okay, so then <coughs> now we can write an, another nice thing. So then the natural numbers is a subset. I'm just copying the previous line of the whole numbers. The natural numbers is a subset of the whole numbers. Now, what about the whole numbers? The whole numbers is a subset of the integers. Right? Every whole number is an integer. Every single one of them. Is every integer a whole number? No, right? Because negative 1 is an integer, but it's not a whole number. <coughs> okay. <coughs> so we're getting used to the names of these sets. So natural numbers, whole numbers, integers. What's another set? A set that's bigger than the integers. Okay. Real numbers, that one's too big. I don't want to go there yet. <coughs> number in between the integers and the real numbers starts with R. Rational. Rational numbers. <coughs> okay. Rational numbers. So what does it mean for a number to be rational? Does that mean that if you find one of them about to make a bad decision, you can sit them down over coffee and say, you know, we really need to think about this. And then they'll say, oh, yeah, you're right. Is that what a rational number is? No, probably not, right? That sounds pretty silly. So, so what, what, uh, what is a rational number? A number that ends. I don't know what you mean. I'm 
not sure. I'm not sure I understand. <coughs> so let me think about this. Rational. So there's there's two language. There's at least two ways you could try and understand the word rational. So rational. You know, the joke that I made was that maybe this rational is related to rationality, as in oh, philosoph the philosophical reasonableness and rationalness. Okay, no, it's not, right? So then actually this word is actually related to ratio, right, ratio, which <coughs> in this case, what a rational number is, is that it is the ratio of integers, meaning it's one integer divided by another integer. Okay, so then <coughs> this is equal to the set of all p over q, the set of all p over q, such that p and q are in z, <coughs> and q is not 0. Why am I making the requirement that q is Yeah, because <coughs> division by zero is illegal, right? You can't do that. <coughs> it's against the rules. Okay, so the reason why uh, it's called the rational numbers is because we have the ratio P over Q. Okay, so then now, who, who knows the name of the rational numbers, right? So then we're starting to get kind of weird here. <laughs> so the natural numbers, N, that was good. Whole numbers, W, all right. Uh, we lost the W in the pronunciation, but it's written with a W, so okay. And then we called the, the, the integers Z for a German Zahlen. So then what, uh, what about the rational numbers? What do you think? Hmm. Okay, so then it's Q. Q for quotient. for quotient. Okay, <coughs> so why, why the word quotient? What is a quotient? Quotient is a synonym for ratio. <coughs> Again, this has German roots. English is just, you know, kind of a, a funny language in that way, right? So then a lot of other languages, they sort of just, you know, when, when something new is invented and it's brought into their language, they make up a word that, that works for them. Not English, right? We just take whatever words you have and just, we'll just use it. <laughs> so, you know, like uh, uh, in Spain, the country, right, where they speak Spanish, they have, uh, you know, the the official academy of, of Spanish, you know, that defines the Spanish language. What is it called? Real Academy something something. At any rate, when computers became important, they came up with a new name for computer. They didn't want to call it computer. They called it ordenador. Of course, I think that that didn't end up working out. I think most Spanish people call it computer now. <laughs> Simi similarly, the French we came up, you know, Americans came up with email, <laughs> and that didn't sound appealing to French people, so they came up with their own word, courriel. But I think, nevertheless, they still call it email. <coughs> so in English, we just, whatever, you know, you want to call it, you want to call it quotient, email, whatever. <coughs> okay, so there's, there's one more set that we're going to talk about. Ah, so before we, before we get further, though, can, can someone tell me a quotient? a rational number, which is not an integer. One point five, okay. So I'm not sure that one point five is actually a rational number. One over five, okay, one over five, that'll work. <coughs> Why am I not sure that one point five is a rational number? You don't know? <laughs> okay. So let's let's be truthful here. I, I'm sure that 1.5 is a rational number. Okay, but but right. 
So, okay, three over two. Three over two, that's a rational number. Okay. So then what do you suppose the relationship is of this? Of we have three sets already, and here's the fourth one. What is the relationship between all, all four of these now? <coughs> They're all subsets, right? Oops, no, I don't want to move it. I want to copy it. Which was the reason I did it. <coughs> Very nice. Okay, so then now, then the integers are a subset of the rational numbers. Okay, so that's kind of weird. How is 3 a rational number? I mean, don't rational numbers need to be written as ratios? As quotients? How is 3 a rational number? Ah, 3 over 1, right? Alternatively, what's another way to write 3 that's not 3 over 1 as a rational number? Sorry? 9 over 3, 6 over 3, right? All of these ways are <coughs> ways to write that. Okay, so then the last one, the name of this section, the last set we're going to talk about is the real numbers. The real numbers. <coughs> okay, so this is kind of strange, the real numbers. It makes you wonder, are there numbers that that aren't real? <laughs> and the answer is yes, but I'll get to that in a minute. Okay, <coughs> so the real numbers. Okay, so the real numbers uh, are denoted <coughs> as follows. So what do you think, what letter do we think is? Which one? R, it is R. <laughs> finally, right, we finally got one. <laughs> okay, the real numbers, set of all real numbers, and this is just going to be a loose definition, the set of all real numbers contains every number you know, <laughs> all of them. <coughs> it's the set of all real numbers contains every number that you know. It is denoted with a bold space R for real. <coughs> and then finally we have the, the full inclusion that all of these things are subsets like this. But now, it's interesting, right? Can you think of a number which is not a rational number? You need a number that's not rational. Sorry? Well, some decimal numbers are rational. Okay, <coughs> so let's, let's think of some examples. Okay, so for example, how about, how about uh, the first example we'll do is 0 0.3. So that's a decimal number. Is this a rational number? Is it a rational number? Can it be written as the ratio of two integers? In what way? 3 over 10, right? Because I could say that this is 0 0.3 multiplied by 10 over 10. Right, you can always multiply by 1. <coughs> so then, 0 0.3 uh, multiplied by the 10 in the numerator okay, is 3. And then the 10 in the denominator is like this, 3 tenths. So evidently, uh, 0 0.3 is rational because it can be written as 3 over 10. Okay, 2. How about something a little more complicated? How about something like... 0. Point, uh, I don't know, 1, 8, 9, like this. Can this be written as a rational number? How? 189 over 1,000, right? Because how many, how many places are there behind the decimal? Three places, 
Okay, so then how many places were there behind the decimal on the first question? One. So I multiplied by one by this one with one zero behind it. So now I'm, I'm going to multiply by one with three zeros behind it. <coughs> one thousand over a thousand, like so. So this could be written as one eight nine over one thousand. Okay, so evidently 0 0.189 is rational as well. Okay, so then how about this example? 0 0.3333, uh, I'm going to write that right there. And what does that bar over the 3 mean? <laughs> There's infinitely many 3s, it goes on forever. So wait a minute, how many places are there behind the decimal? Infinitely many, uh-oh, right? We can't multiply by 1 with infinitely many zeros behind it. You know, we can't. Can't do that. But nevertheless, you should you should still recognize this number. What is this number? It's a third. Right? So then this is uh, evidently, right? <coughs> evidently a rational number because it can be written as one over three. All right. So <coughs> how about now we do one that's more complicated? So how about, how about this? Zero point, we'll take the previous example, 189, 189, 189, and I'll write this. So what does this mean? Right, the 189 is, is, uh, appears infinitely many times. <coughs> hmm. So is this a rational number? Is this a rational number? Can it, is this a number that can be written as the ratio of two integers? <coughs> well, you might think it's reasonable to think it might be because consider the previous example, right? The, the previous example had one digit, three, that was repeating. And it ended up being the ratio one over three. And now this one has, this one has three digits, three digits that are repeating. 189, 189, 189, 189. Is it possible <coughs> to write this as the ratio of two integers? And the answer is yes. Yes, let's do it. It requires a little bit of a trick. Okay. <coughs> so let's say that x, right, we're going to give a variable name x. x is equal to 0 0.189 189 repeating. Okay, <coughs> so it's equal to that number that I gave you. So now, how many digits? How many digits are repeating? Three of them, right? Three repeating digits. Because there's three repeating digits, I'm going to multiply by 10 three times. If there were 12 repeating digits, I would multiply by 10 12 times. Right? If there were five repeating digits, I'd multiply by 10 five times. If there were banana repeating digits, I'd multiply by 10 banana times. Okay, so then <coughs> multiplication by 10 three times is 1,000. So 1,000 x is how much? So what happens to the decimal place when I multiply by 1,000? It moves three places to the right. Okay, so then we get 189.189, 189, 189, 189, repeating, <coughs> like so. Okay, so then now, <coughs> something kind of weird happened. Did, did I write the number of, of decimal digits correctly for 1,000, for 1,000 X? Yeah, I did. I did because I just, I wrote, you know, these three, 1, 8, 9, correspond to these three, 1, 8, 9. But I just wrote an extra one <coughs> because now I want you to see this very nice thing. And that is, what is 1,000 X minus X? That is to say, what is the second line minus the first line? 
189, right? Because the whole part, there's zero, the whole part is zero for x. The whole part is 189 for 1,000 x. So this is 189. And then the fraction part, right, this fraction part minus that fraction part is how much? It's exactly zero. <coughs> So then now, right, the left-hand side, how much x is on the left-hand side? 999x. And 189 on the right. So then now here's an equation. Can you solve for x? Okay, so x is how much? 189 over 999. So my original question was, I gave you this number. Okay, this number that I've now just boxed in red. And I asked the question, is this number a rational number? So is it? Evidently it is. <coughs> okay, so that now, would you be able to carry out this procedure if I gave you one, like on a homework question or on a quiz? I say, here's a, here's a number with a repeating decimal expansion like this. Uh, represent it as a um, rational number. Would you be able to do it? I think so. Okay. <coughs> Good. Another thing <coughs> that I neglected to mention at the very beginning is that calculators will not be allowed. Okay, you can use calculators on the homework, but on the written homework, I don't care, and on the online homework, I don't care. But but on the actual quizzes and on the exam, there's no no calculators allowed. So then you won't need a calculator going to ask you to do things that require a calculator. Okay, <coughs> so any question about this, these examples? Okay, so evidently there's there are some rational numbers. Are there any numbers which are not rational? Probably, right? <laughs> there probably are some. <coughs> okay, so let's do an example because this is an example of a number wi which is not rational. Because as a mathematician, I explained to you that there are two sets, right? There's the quotient, the rational numbers, and then there's the real numbers. And if I say that there's a if there's this set of real numbers, then there better be something that's in the real numbers, but but not rational, because otherwise, what are we talking about? Okay, <coughs> so then here's the claim: the square root of two is not rational. So this is my claim. Okay, so I'm going to show you something, and you can write it down, or you can watch it on YouTube or whatever. But I'm not going to ask you to repeat this kind of argument quiz and exam. It's a little bit complicated. It's beyond the scope of the class. But I want you to see, I want to demonstrate to you that there is at least one number that's not rational, and I want you to see the kind of arguments that are made in more advanced math classes. Okay, <coughs> so then the way this is going to go is I'm going to say, okay, I, I want to show that it's not rational, so I'm going to assume that it, that it is rational. So I'll assume that it is, and then I'll start making an argument. Okay. And then I'll I'll come to an absurd conclusion like one is equal to zero or dogs are equal to cats or something like this. And then, then we'll say, oh, no, 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 that, that's all absurd. So what I must have assumed originally must be false. Okay, my original assumption must be false, so therefore the square root of two cannot be rational. Such an argument is called an argument by contradiction. Okay, so are we ready? All right. So assume... <coughs> The square root of 2 is rational. <coughs> I.e., that the square root of 2 is equal to P over Q, <coughs> with <coughs> P and Q in the integers, and P and Q have no common factors. Okay, so what do I mean by no common factors? 
yeah, it can't be simplified. So like for example, um, you know, five tenths, five tenths can be simplified into what? One half, because because the numerator and the denominator have a common factor of of five. Right? There's a there's a five in the numerator, a five in the denominator. Okay, similarly, two over four. Well, that's the same as one over two because the numerator and the denominator have a common factor of two. So what I'm saying is that let's let's say that that the square root of two can be written as p over q, where p and q are integers, and they have no common factor. <coughs> Such a thing is a requirement for something to be a rational number. Okay, then I could say that well, q times the square root of two is equal to p. can square both sides and get that q squared multiplied by 2 is equal to p squared. Okay, q squared multiplied by 2 <coughs> is equal to p squared. So then, <coughs> what this says is that 2 divides p squared. That is to say that we can see that p squared, p squared is equal to 2 times q squared. So, so p squared is even. p squared is an even number. Okay, so 2 is a divisor of p squared. <coughs> 2 divides p squared. And if 2 divides p squared, <coughs> then 2 must also divide p. Because if a number squared is even, then the original number must have been even also. Because, for example, how about 3 squared? What's 3 squared? 9, right? 3 squared is 9. Is 9 even? No. And neither is 3. Okay, so, so 2 divides p squared, so 2 divides p. <coughs> so p can be written... So p is even, and it can be written as 2n for some n. Okay, so now we're getting to something interesting. So q squared multiplied by 2 is equal to p squared. That's a copy of the previous line. <coughs> so q squared multiplied by 2 is equal to 2n squared, and that's copying that's taking this to here. Okay, so then now what happens when you do this? Oops. Q squared times 2 is equal to. So when you distribute the exponent into this, how, d how does this right hand side uh, simplify? 4n squared. So does every is that, is everyone clear on that much? 4n squared? Okay, good. 4n squared. <coughs> Okay, so q squared times 2 is 4 times n squared. So now I can divide both sides by what? By 2, and then I get q squared is equal to 2n squared. Ah, so that means that q squared is even. If q squared is equal to 2 times n squared, then q squared must be even. <coughs> So q squared is even. <coughs> so q is even. But wait a minute. Now we have a problem. Now we have a big problem. What big problem do we have? <coughs> Let's look at the whole argument. So there's something that does that cannot possibly make sense on the page. So what? Where is it? Someone describe to me what what cannot possibly. Ah, right. Look, we said that. Okay, let's assume that you can write the square root of two as p over q. And p over q have no common factor. Okay, let's assume that it's possible to do that. And then let's carry out this this sequence of algebraic steps. Well, if if you make that assumption, if you make that assumption, then that means that p is even. 
and that further implies that Q is even. So if P and Q are both even, then P and Q have a common factor of two. They have a common factor of two. So if we assume that the square root of two can be written as a rational number and it has no common factors, then we can prove that it in fact it does have common factors. So that doesn't make sense at all. So the only conclusion that we can make is that, oh, well, it's not possible to assume that the square root of two can be written as a rational number. So it's not rational. That's it. <coughs> okay, so then the bottom line is that these three things, the fact that there's no common factors, P is even, or Q is even, these tell you that, therefore, the square root of 2 is not rational. Okay, <coughs> so we've looked at the various sets of numbers, okay, and I've shown you that there's at least one number that's a perfectly good number, uh, but it's not rational. Okay, so you may be surprised to find out that <coughs> if you take the real numbers, if you were to take the real numbers and turn every single real number into a, a, a ball, right, and then put them all in a bag, and then you have them all, you have, you have equal chance of choosing any number whatsoever, any number whatsoever. And you reach your hand in the bag, and you grab one, and you pull it out, and you look at it. What do you, what do you think the odds are that you'll choose a rational number? chance do you have? So for example, if I took, if I took, uh, you know, six, six balls and labeled them one through six and put them all in a bag and sh shook it up, what's the probability that you would pull out the number three? One six. One six. Okay. So what's the probability if I take all of the rational numbers, turn them all into balls, put them all in some bag, you have equal chance of choosing any uh, any of them. What's the what's the chance that you'll pull out a rational number? The answer mi might surprise you. Zero. You have no chance of pulling out a rational number, none whatsoever, because in fact the vast vast majority of all numbers are not rational. <coughs> okay, good. So what's another number that's not rational? <coughs> well, square root of three. Okay, good. What's another one? Square root of five. Wait, why'd you skip four? Ah, because the square root of four is two, right? Okay, so that one that one doesn't work. Okay, so then <coughs> generally, right? So we you I said two, you said three, you said five. What are all these two, three, and five have in common? What is it? I'm looking for a word that starts with P. What? I don't think they're perfect. I think 6 is the first perfect number if we're talking about the same perfect. Something else that starts with P and ends with prime. Prime, right? So is prime, is that a word that y'all know, prime? So does anyone not know prime? I don't, I don't know exactly where y'all are. <coughs> I, wasn't I wasn't briefed, right, about, about your prior experience. Okay, so then <coughs> the square root of any prime number is irrational. Great. Okay, so then let's continue talking about these things. <coughs> okay, so this is now going to be properties of the real numbers. Oh, great, yes, it's going to crash. <coughs> okay, so while it's crashing, we'll <coughs> shoot the breeze. So, summer school. Whose idea was that? You know, three hours? It wasn't my idea. <coughs> <coughs> In my experience, humans only have the capacity to focus for about 35 to 55 minutes, and that's it.
Okay. <coughs> so now, properties. of the real numbers. Okay, so then I'm going to write the title here in a minute, but we're going to list off some properties. So I'm going to write the title there. I'm going to write out what, <coughs> what the truth is. So A plus B is equal to B plus A. A plus B is equal to B plus A. So that's that's something that we already know, right? Three plus five is is eight, and five plus three is eight. So it apparently doesn't matter what order you do this in. Okay. <coughs> so then this similarly works with multiplication. A B is equal to what? B A. Okay. So then the order in which you do these things does not matter. Okay, so then what is the name for this property? Not that one. That's, that's one of the names that we're going to talk about. The one that I'm fishing for right now starts with a C. Commutative, right? <coughs> Commutative. Commutative. So to commute means to move. Okay, so then what these are saying is that, you know, you have this plus. If you hold the plus symbol fixed, you can move the A across and the B across, and the result doesn't change. Okay, so the A and B can be moved. Commutative. Okay, so this is something that you already, <coughs> I'm sure you already knew. But we, you have to know what these things are because I'm going to ask you what these things are. Okay, second. of what goes there in a second. <coughs> so the third property is that A plus B plus C is equal to A plus B plus C. <coughs> okay, so that's how it is for sum for plus. Okay, so similarly, A, B, C is equal to A, B, C. Okay, so what is the name of this property? So it's not, not the D word and not the T word. It starts with the A. This is associative. Right, associative. So what does it mean, you know, to associate with someone, to be around someone, right, to be grouped together with someone? Okay, so then the associative property, this is associative. Associative. It means that you can group them, you know, you can group, you can do A plus B first, you can do B plus C first, whatever you like. You can do A times B first, you can do B times C first, whatever you like. It doesn't matter. It works out. Okay, <coughs> associative. Okay, so then the next one is that we have these two properties. These two things that we are, you know, somewhat talking about and, and a little bit assuming you know what we're talking about. These two things we can do with numbers. We can add and multiply them, <coughs> right? We li we humans really like systems like this where we take two things of the same category, right? Two numbers, add them, get another number. Right, great. Does that does that always work? Can you take any two numbers? Can you add any two numbers you like? Any two? Yeah, you can add any two numbers you like. You always get a number. You can t take any two numbers that you like, and you can multiply them and get another number. Right, we love that. <coughs> we love systems like that. Okay, so then when you go on in, in math and science and that kind of thing, you'll... you'll see that sometimes you take two things of the same category and you don't get a third thing of the same category when you combine them somehow, you know. So that that's really weird, right? right? So combine two numbers, get another number, great. Combine two cats, more cats, great. Right? Combine two cats and get a dog. You know, that's 
not so great. That's kind of weird. We're not really sure about that. Okay. <coughs> so what we need to know now is we need to know how uh, the operation of plus and product, how sum and product interact with each other. So <coughs> A multiplied by B plus C is equal to what? Who knows? <laughs> AB plus AC. Okay, so this is exactly what you what you hope. Okay, so then now someone has said it before. What's the name of this property? Distributive. A mathematician would say that that <coughs> this product distributes over the sum. Because what happens is, you know, in a sense, the reason for the word distributive is that this A, right, distributes to B, distributes, right, to A and to, R, to B and to C. Like this B got an A and this C got an A. Yes. Okay, good. Okay. <coughs> so another property is that for every operation that you do in math and science, for every kind of procedure you're going to take care of, you want to have something that represents doing nothing, right? because everybody likes to do nothing most of the time, right? us being human beings. Okay, <coughs> so then where plus is concerned, where plus is concerned, sum, what number represents doing nothing, ch changing it not at all? Zero, right? What, I what happens to a number if you add zero to it? Nothing, right? Nothing. So then A plus zero is equal to A. Fantastic. Okay, similarly, where product is concerned, where product is concerned, what number, yes, what number represents doing nothing? One, right? So A multiplied by one. So sometimes this dot is used to represent product is equal to A. So there's a multiplicative identity. Okay, so these are called, oh, I ruined it. So what are these things called? <laughs> Identities. Identities. Okay, they're called identities because, right, if you take A and you add zero to it, you get A back. So that kind of tells you what A is, right? I, how do I figure out what you are? I add zero to you and then see what happens. I get you back, right? I take you and I multiply you by one and then, and then nothing changed and then I get you back. Okay, so they're called identities. <coughs> okay, so now we have inverses. Four. Uh, I won't write it all out. I'll say that a plus negative a is equal to what? Zero, right? A plus negative a is equal to zero. Okay. So what I'm saying there's a, there's some things being unsaid here, and that is that first, <coughs> this is for any real number. Any real number has an additive inverse. So what's the additive inverse of 11? Negative 11. What's the additive inverse of negative 3? Positive 3. What is the additive inverse of 0? Zero. 0, right? It's its own additive inverse. That's interesting. Right? Is there any other number that is its own additive inverse? No. No, there's no other number that is its own additive inverse. Okay. I believe we are having a fire drill. <laughs> okay. Wait, 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 wait. May I have your attention, please? May I have your attention, please? An emergency has been reported. While this is being verified, please leave the building by the nearest exit or exit stairway. Uh, 
Unbelievable. <laughs> okay, but we're still having class as soon as it as soon as it clears. You can, but, or you can take your you can take your thing. I'm sure there's not really a serious emergency, but we do need to leave. <laughs>